Hi everybody, Omer Sheriff here. And uh, looking outside, it's not too bad a day here today. Our, looks like our winter season might be finally coming to an end. After seven months, I thought too bad. <laughs> anyway, today what I'd like to do is just spend a few minutes here talking with you about these pedestals here that I have off behind me. And uh, what these are for is for uh, mounts. I've made these for a local uh, uh, for a local man here that does mounts and uh, for animals. If he's a taxidermist, and uh, what he might put on something like this here might be a uh, mounted uh, coyote or maybe uh, a tiger or uh, an animal, some type like that. There for the size of these particular pedestals, and uh, what what they uh, are inside here is there will be some styrofoam put in there and then he will complete it by making it look like prairie grass in there or something of that nature to make it look like a very natural setting for the animals. So uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of time here to go through how these things are actually uh, uh, figured out and how they're actually, uh, uh, the corners are actually mitered to make them fit and so on from there because uh, if you've never done one before, it's not not that easy unless you do have a little bit of an idea as to how you're going to do that. And uh, what I thought I'd do here today, like any other project, you start out with a plan. And the plan that I have here is just a sketch, just a bare sketch of what we've got. And if you notice, these things are all eight-sided. So it uh, complicates it somewhat because you've got angles in all the corners to figure out and so on. But like I say, once you get the hang of how this is to be done, then great, then it, it becomes a lot easier. So taking it from this sketch that the customer gave me, I will do a layout here on this piece of plywood here just to identify exactly what my angles and corners and that will be so I can figure out the degrees and that and cut them from there. So let's just take a look at this here. I'm going to take a little closer shot here at the uh, board. I hope you can see that from there. I'll make you slide this ahead a little bit. Come on like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just proceed to draw this out. Like on this uh, diagram that I have here, the total measurements are supposed to be 26 by 26 uh, and 30 inches high. So, but remembering there's eight sides to this. So here's what I generally do, is I will take and measure up here 26 inches to there, and 26 inches this way to there. Then, I will proceed to draw a straight line with, with this uh, T-square, that's a 26 inch, and I'll take it right across. Same thing from the other side. Okay, so the total uh, finished product should fit within these dimensions of that particular uh, square. Now, he has written on here that this side here, for instance, right here, there, there, that's a 14 inch piece. Okay, so what I will first do is measure to the center of this 26 inches, which is 13 inches. I'll put a mark there. I'll do the same on this side. 13 inches. 13 inches. And 13 inches. All right, like I said, he has these here marked down to be 14 inches, the longer panel. So half of 14 is seven. So from this mark that I put here on center, we go seven inches to each side. Seven and 14. We go seven and 14. 
7 and 14. Same thing over here. 7 and 14. Now what we can do is take and rock in our corners here. But you just draw a line across the corner. Same thing here. Turn this over. Across there. Same thing in all the corners. Except we do now because we haven't drawn in with the, with the angles and everything. Which it, evidently, uh, this particular thing being the sides are of equal uh, lengths and stuff, think these automatically become 45 degrees. But the length of them, we just take and measure them out now. The length is 8 and 1 half inches for these little angled pieces in here. Okay, you know that what the little angles are, you know what these are, and right on around the whole thing. So now what you can do is go over to your saw and proceed to cut these. Now, you know that these are 14, so uh, you can take your sheet of, of plywood, in fact these are oak, oak plywood that they're made of, you can take and rip your sheets into, uh, uh, well you'll need, uh, you can count how many sides you need, and I'm making two of these here, so I would have one, two, three, four times two, would have, I need eight pieces, 14 inches wide by 30 inches high. So if you take and break that down into a sheet of plywood, dry your sheet of plywood out, and you break that down into 14 inch sides, like this here, 30 inches into that goes three plus a little bit, one like this here, and we need eight of them, so you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so out of the one sheet, you can, you can uh, take and cut your uh, your four sides out of here, and if you need eight of them in, in my case here, because I did two exactly the same size, you can cut your sheets in 14 inch strips, 30 inches long, and there's your side pieces. Then from there, We've determined that these little angle corners for these here are eight and a half inches. So that's what you do there now. You can you take in your remainder here. There there will be uh, some you can get out of the last block, and then you'll have to go into another sheet, of course. But you can cut those eight and a half inches by thirty inches long. And once again, we need four per unit. Have two units like that, so I need eight of them. So that's, that would be what, what that would amount to. Now, let's just check these angles just to make sure that we're, we're right on. Now not, what you can do is use this little tri-square, which has a 45 degree right in it. So just by putting that in here, putting that along that long line, and your rule here should go right down the corner, which it is right on 45 degrees. Uh, another way of checking your degrees is with this protractor. And this works very well for that type of, of uh, the job too. I'll just get this going the right way here. Just putting the base on the line and letting the uh, rule go the other way. Tighten your screws down here so it doesn't move on you. And we look at the scale on here and it's right on 45 degrees. So we've confirmed that now with two different measurements. So that tells us that it definitely is 45 degrees. Okay, now once these things are uh, all cut out, they have to be assembled. 
<clears throat> and the first thing you'll want to do is take, and you'll have to cut these corners here on an angle. And, there, and the total corner is 45, so you would take half of that for the corners and bevel each one of these pieces at 22 and one half degrees, which would totally would give you the 45 degree. And I will show you how that, how that will work. And uh, I've just done it ahead of time here. If you can see that these here are not at 90 degrees, they're 40, 40 uh, we'll make a 45 degree. And when they're together, that's how they will be situated, just like that, right there. Now, once these are cut, you have to have a method of uh, uh, putting them together and, and bonding them together. So what I choose to use is what we call the lamello tool. And I'll just show you exactly what that is. Sometimes it's referred to as a biscuit uh, groove cutter. I guess we got a little bit off balance here. At right, any rate, here I'll just plug it in a minute. And as you can see, we've cut this, cut that angle already at uh, 22 and a half degrees on the. Uh, table saw. So what we have to do is set this now to match that. And the way we do that is just put that, the base, the, the face foot against that bevel, bring this down here, whoop, pardon me, like this here, from the bottom side of it. And, and uh, so that this base is right parallel with that angle, this one here sits on the face foot. You just lock it in right there, and that'll be your, your angle. Now, where to cut these biscuits? If you just put your two pieces right together, and no, no particular uh, space, you, you don't have to be dead accurate with this, just as long as you're approximately where you want it, just put a line across here, so these two that you're gonna cut are gonna line up. Maybe you want another one up here, another one back here. Okay, I'm going to just do these here for you. Got the part on the wrong side here for some reason. Just a minute. Okay, we're ready to go here. Now if we just put, there's a mark right on the face of this here, to where the center of that cut will be. So mark, line that up with your mark on your board. What you will see here, I have cut a half moon shape into there. And uh, what that'll, uh, These are the biscuits here that would go into that. And normally what you do is you put a little bit of glue in there and then you push that into the groove. That you like, just like that there. Okay, now having that biscuit in there, you should also cut the other one here. Nice clean cut, fast, doesn't take any time at all. You just put that into that one there and there's your joint together. Right like that. If it's glued in that, that will stay forever. It just secures all get out. Because what happens with those little biscuits when the glue hits them, they have a tendency to swell. And uh, if you ever want to take one apart, chances are you're going to bust the wood trying to do it. So it becomes a very strong joint and uh, works very well for this, this particular application. So that's how these corners would be joined. 
with that biscuit type on there. Now, what I do too in this particular case is I angle drill at the top and I put a screw in at the top, same thing at the bottom. Uh, drill down an angle, put a screw in through there, just to really secure that part. Then I proceeded to uh, put the whole surround together, and then I took the surround and I set it on a base, okay, such as this here. And uh, if you take this particular base that I drew out, this is the outside perimeter of the fixture. Now, if you were to take a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, for instance, let's just say one of these here, and just set it just on the inside of that line, draw another line, through here, all the way around, that would be your exact size for the base of the bottom to set up inside, and also for your top that goes up in here too. So that would give you the uh, the exact sizes for that, and uh, keep your uh, your system all in proper proportion as you uh, uh, install this inside, because it'll it'll have a tendency to square it up for you. Now, after that's together, of course, you've got all the uh, decorative stuff that must go on there. Like for instance, here, all I did was use a baseboard, a common baseboard or or molding that. Uh, look good on there, that, that type of thing. I've used one on the bottom, one on the top. Then I went to finish off the top, being that this is just raw plywood from the, the sides up top here, I just made a half inch solid oak uh, piece here that I took and ran over the router and around the corners off and inserted it on, on the top of that. Uh, worked out very well. And then of course from there becomes your finishing. You can you know, whatever you choose to do with the finishing. In this case here, they wanted them in a, a dark walnut, so this is what we did it in. Uh, has four coats of lacquer on it, so it gives it quite a, a, a durable finish to it. And uh, uh, they can look very attractive. I mean, these are for uh, animal mounts and that, but maybe you've got some type of arrangement in your home that you might want to use something like this here as an end table on the end of your couch or something like that with this uh, some type of arrangement to go in there or whatever. There's many different purposes you could use for it. But uh, basically that gives you an idea how this can be achieved. Thank you for your time.